Hi, this is Robin, and this video is going to be about correcting perspective in photographs using Photoshop. This part one video is specifically focused on architecture and buildings. So uh, to give you some background about this, many photographers end up with photos that either tilt in or tilt back at the top. And you can see that it's happening in this image on my screen right here, which is an interior. And what that converging vertical lines effect is called is keystoning. And what happens is keystoning results from tilting your camera up or down while you're taking your photos. Now, it can plague anybody from travel photographers to fine art architectural photographers, real estate photographers, and others. Um, sometimes that keystoning effect actually can be artistic and you want to use it to your advantage. But when you don't and it just looks kind of kooky, uh, there are ways to correct it in Photoshop. Now, before we even get into Photoshop, let me just tell you there are some ways to avoid keystoning in architectural photography at the time of capture. Um, so some of the tips for doing that are to keep your camera perfectly level when shooting buildings. Now, that's not always easy to do. I mean, if you're like in the situation I was here where you're very close and it's a very tall building, then you have to kind of tilt it up to get everything in the scene. And that was even with me using an ultra wide angle lens. Um, if you're by a skyscraper or a very tall bridge, which I also include in the architecture category, it's going to be difficult to do that. But that's the first tip is keep your camera perfectly level when shooting buildings to avoid those converging lines. The next tip is to stand back further and try to get the whole structure into your shot without tilting the camera. But trouble is, is when you do that, you're going to be back probably so far that you are going to have to crop out a lot of the surroundings. So hopefully you have a lot of megapixels, a lot of uh, memory on your images so that if you crop out a lot, you're not going to lose the resolution and the quality of your image by doing that. Um, another option, as I just mentioned, is to use an ultra wide angle lens. Now, the trouble with the ultra wide angle lens is even though you can get a lot more content at closer in, uh, those lenses can sometimes produce barrel distortion. So not only would you maybe get the converging lines, but then you get some rounding of the surfaces that are in the scene as well. Another option uh, for avoiding keystoning is to use a camera with built-in keystoning correction features. I actually have an Olympus camera that does that. Um, so that's another option. And then the final option that I was going to raise, there might be some others, but uh, is to use a tilt shift lens. And they are very expensive lenses and they're not available for all cameras. Um, but what those lenses do is keep the camera plane level with the building or the structure that you're photographing so that you can get the whole building and not get the keystoning effect. So those are things that you can do at time of capture, but when you can't do those things or they're not practical or affordable for you, then you actually can correct keystoning in Photoshop. Now, that's not to say you always have to. Sometimes, actually, the keystoning can add some interesting effects or make uh, use of positive and negative space in ways that might be a, a benefit to your image. But when it's not and when it just looks kooky or, you know, crazy or, you know, you just would need to fix those lines, then there are perspective correction options and tools in Photoshop. So in this video, I'm going to demonstrate three Photoshop perspective tools, and they can be used either with out of camera photos, so directly out of the camera, or you can also use these methods with composites. So if you put Im another image or another subject or object into a scene that has some very clear perspective, you can use these tools to adjust the perspective of the buildings or the structures that you're putting into the scene, to compositing into the scene to make sure that they match the perspective of your background plate. 
So you have some flexibility there in terms of how you can use these tools. And the tools that I'm going to demonstrate are three today. So the lens correction filter, the distort perspective tool, and perspective warp. Now, as I said, <laughs> this video is about perspective and correcting perspective in architectural photography, but I will make another video that's also about correcting perspective in landscape photos because there can be distortions there too. So for those of you who are more landscape oriented, I'll uh, speak to some of those perspective tools that will help in that genre in another video. Now, as I said, sometimes keystoning can add to the look of an image. so. You just decide for yourself when or you want to or not want to kind of apply these perspective correction tools. So the one other thing that I would suggest to make the best use of the perspective correction tools in Photoshop, especially if you can't do the things I said right up front in camera, is shoot wider than you normally would. Don't frame or crop your image with the building lines tight. Keep it wider so that when you are working in Photoshop, you have some room to do the perspective correction and not lose a lot of content. If you t crop in where you ideally would like the outside lines, the frame of your image to be, you're going to lose content when you correct the perspective. So that was my biggest advice there is leave yourself room to do some perspective correction. So before we get started, I just always like to mention that under the video, uh, there's a button that says subscribe. Um, and if you have not done so already, um, if you already subscribed before in another video of mine, then you're all set. You don't need to do anything. Uh, but if you haven't, it's free to subscribe. You can click on that button and then hit the little uh I guess there's an icon for a black bell. And what that means is that YouTube would just send you one notification when I do release new content once or twice a month. And you're not going to get any follow-up emails from me. So it's just uh, something so you can get a heads up if that's convenient for you. All right. So as I said, um, I'm going to be demonstrating three Photoshop Keystone perspective correction methods in this video. They don't all work equally well for all images. So that's why I'm trying to give you some options here. So if one method doesn't work out for a particular image of yours, you have two other options to try. And because there are going to be three different techniques, if you might find you like one better than another, I'll list the start times for each of the techniques in the description below the video. And that way, if you just want to go to that part of the video at some time in the future, you can do that. All right, so before I get started here on the demo one, which will be about using the lens correction filter, I just wanted to give a quick tour of my Photoshop interface for anybody who hasn't seen my videos before. Um, so I have my layers panel up on the top right here. I have my properties panel down on the lower right here. And for convenience, I have docked my toolbar over here on the right. So in case you need to translate for how your Photoshop is set up, I hope that will help. OK, so we're going to use this interior image from a, a building in Philadelphia here um, for the first demo on using the lens correction filter. And what we want to always do here is, OK, so open your image and you'll see a, you get a background layer, as I have here on the right. And I always suggest duplicating that layer. So I'm going to drag it to the bottom of the Layers panel to the Add New Layer icon, which is that square with the plus right there. And we get a background copy. Uh, you can also do a Control or Command J, whichever you prefer. Now, I am going to suggest that after you get this background copy, you convert it to a smart object. And that will give you the option that if you're not totally pleased with the settings that you make, you can just reopen and tweak the settings and you don't have to start all over again. So to convert this layer to a smart object, just go over here into the empty space on that active layer, which is blue, right click and you get this menu, come down to where it says convert to smart object and click on that. And now you get this little icon in the lower right hand corner on the thumbnail that shows you that that means that's now a smart object. Now, what I find useful to do, and you can try it with and without it to see if it's working for you, is to crop the original image a little bit wider 
than the actual image just to do the perspective correction. So I'm going to come to the toolbar and down to the crop tool, which is right here. It looks like those two little angles together. Left click on that to make it active. You get the handles on the image in the workspace here. And I'm just going to pull out on each of these dark, uh, the solid white areas to just crop this a little bit wider than what the original image is showing. So you're seeing that as I pull this out and release, um, I'm left clicking and dragging and then releasing, we're getting this transparency around here on the layer. And then once you've completed doing that, just come to the top of the interface, left click on the check to accept it. And now what you can see in the layer that it's showing it with the transparency behind it. Okay, so we've got the smart object. We've cropped it a little bit wider just to do the adjustments. And now we're going to go to the top of the interface to the filter menu right up here. If you see my little highlighter here, click on that and come down pretty close to the top here to where it says lens correction right here. When that's highlighted, left click to get into the lens correction interface. So now we are in the lens correction interface. You can see it's different. So let me just uh, point out some of the things that we have here. So um, I always have mine clicked down here at the bottom of this interface to preview so I can see what's happening. I also like to leave mine uh, clicked to show grid because I think it helps to see if the lines are straight. But if that's distracting to you or if you want to try it without it to see how it looks and then turn it on and you have the flexibility that it's just a toggle, you can click that on or off. Also, you can see down here in the lower left right next to it that there's some metadata. So it says what kind of camera model was used, what kind of lens, and what the settings were to capture this scene. That will come in handy if you go up here to the right to the settings panel because this interface opens by default to auto correction. And what that means is you can select your camera and your lens and endure so it's the model would be olympus the make would be in this case the olympus em5 mark ii and then the lens and in this case the lens was an olympus uh, 7 through 14 millimeter i know for a fact that my setup is not available here for auto correction if yours is you can try auto correction and see if that just quickly <laughs> straightens out this keystoning for you and makes these pillars straight and straightens up the whole room. I cannot use auto correction because they don't have the parameters that I need here for my image. So what you have to do is if yours don't match either right next to auto correction is a little tab that says custom left click on that and it opens these other settings now if you were using an ultra wide angle lens that caused some barreling and some rounding you can try using right here under geometric distortion remove distortion and you can see from the little icons which way it will go <laughs> depending on which way your distortion is going I don't see that kind of rounding in mind, so I am not going to use it for my image. But if you do have that kind of barrel distortion, you can try it for yours. There's also a tool here at the upper left, this top icon, that also you can drag from the center out on the grid and it will adjust barrel distortion. I personally, when I need to do it, prefer using this slider to this little icon here. So that's just my personal preference. So again, you can try it and either use this slider here or try working with this little icon and pulling it out and following the directions. Now, because we are primarily talking about in this video correcting perspective and specifically vertical perspective, which is keystoning, I'm going to have you come all the way down to the bottom of this custom tab to where it says transform and come to this slider that says vertical perspective. And uh, you can see here that, again, it's a slider that you can pull in either direction, and it's showing you the icon. So if you pull it to the left, it's going to widen the top. If you pull it to the right, it's going to widen the bottom. Since mine is tilting in, my keystoning is tilting in, I want to 
try to pull it out to the left, to like as if I'm pushing it up, um, to try to straighten up those pillars. So I'm going to click on this little handle here in the vertical perspective slider and start pulling that to the seat and watch the image. You don't need to watch the numbers, but I'm just know that I'm pulling it to the left to move out the things. And you can see what's happening here with the image. It's tilting it up and it's straightening that keystoning. Now the other thing you and that's not bad there <laughs> where um, we're dealing with this. This might be tilted a little bit back, angled a little bit back, so maybe I might just do a little tiny bit of the um, horizontal perspective too. So let's see, I think I want to pull it from the back corner towards me. So let's see if this will help with that. Yeah, let me just click here and see if because I think it only needs a very tiny bit. Yeah, let me start there. Okay, so you can decide for yourself if you need the horizontal, but definitely for this kind of image with that kind of vertical keystoning, this vertical perspective slider helped a lot. Now, one of the things I like to try then after I do that is coming again over to the left side of the interface, there's these other tools. So in addition to the barrel distortion, there's also this little icon that looks like a level and that's a straighten tool. So I can left click on that and then let me zoom in a little bit so we can see a line. So this line here is pretty obvious when you're looking at the image because it's a contrast between light and dark. So I think what I will do here is click, left click, uh, right on that line, and then keep i am got this with my mouse button. I'm left clicking and I'm dragging and keeping that left mouse button down. And I'm dragging out the line that I want to be straight and then releasing. And did you see it slightly tilted it up? So that really um, did help. And I can see here, so let me, this next icon down. So below the level tool is a move grid tool. So that's that line with the little hand. So left click on that. And if you want, you can click on the grid and then just slide it down. And yeah, so you can see that's really pretty good. And if I come left, that's not bad. Yeah, so that's pretty good. I'm looking at the vertical as well as the horizontal lines here. So that's pretty good in terms of the correction that it has made. Um, I think with this hand, let me see if I can it, see this hand. I think you can move the image around. If you, Yeah. So if you have zoomed in like I have, you can use that little hand icon to move your image around um, and see if things are lining up or looking good where you want them. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. And let me try pulling this in just a bit and see. Yeah. I'm going to leave that there for purposes of the demo just because you get the idea because you're not going to be working with this image in any case. Um, but you can see now that the pillars have dramatically straightened from how they were. The door isn't tilting back and we've gotten a main line that a viewer's eye would go to right here in the center that if that was um, angled or rotated in a way that would be distracting and look like it was tilting, you can use this little straight and level tool to correct that as well. So once you get your settings the way, and you can rotate and do things like that here, you could scale it up. You know, there's different things you could do here under transform. But once you get this so that you've corrected your keystoning, come to the upper right and just left click on OK. And that accepts your image here back to Photoshop. So now <laughs> when I am looking at this here, I just wanted to see if it's made a difference. So let me come back to my background layer and turn. Yeah, so you can see, look, this was how it started. And this is how the perspective correction worked with it. Now I'm going to turn off this bottom layer because it's distracting to see 
the original layer behind there. So this is what we have ended up with. So once you have done this, then you have other options that you can work with too. So you can, well, let me show you one other thing first. So I had had you use a smart object to do those corrections and said be set it to a smart object before you go into the lens correction. And the reason I said to do that is now look here in the layers panel. It has created some sub layers to your original layer and one of them is called lens correction. So if you double click left click on that, look at this, you're back in the interface. So now you can, if you come back to your custom tab, you've got your same original settings. And let's say, I don't know, you want to make this a little bit less than it was. Okay, just to show you, <laughs> you can make a change to your settings, whatever they are, and then click OK, and then it'll bring you back and include those updated settings. So that's the benefit right there of using the smart object. Now, <laughs> the other thing you can do is now, clearly we still have the transparency and this doesn't look good like this. So if after you use that lens correction tool, let me just pop this up a little bit here, uh, if you still see some tilting or if it looks like it still could use a little correcting, one of the things that you could do is to go over here to your upper left side of your Photoshop interface and go to the Edit menu, come down to Transform and Distort. Oh, sorry. Oh, so we learned something there too. <laughs> so if you want to make changes, um, what you'd have to do, so let me turn that off, uh, is if you want to make changes, let me duplicate this layer. So pull that layer down to the bottom of the layers panel. Turn off the eye on this. We can right click in the empty area and rasterize that layer. Yeah, that's one of the disadvantages of using smart objects is that not all of the functions in Photoshop work and you just have to remember that, but it prompts you. So you can save this layer if you do want to go back to it and then just turn off the eye on it and then work on a rasterized layer. Let's try that again. Upper left, the edit menu, come down to transform, go to the fly out and come down to where it says distort, click on that. And if you do want to either, you know, pull it out to the side a little bit or, you know, like this, you can do that. If there's something, let me get this a little smaller that we can see. Let's say maybe this just didn't tilt exactly the way you want. You can grab this upper handle here and just slide it out just a little bit, nudge it just a little bit further. Same thing over here. Maybe it's still tilting in a little bit. We'll grab the upper right corner and you can do a little bit of perspective adjustment there. And so for this kind of an image, it is much better to work with that lens correction filter and just do some minor little transform distort changes at the end. If you were to use the filter here, edit, transform, and perspective, what that would do is that would make this image very squat. You would not maintain the dimensions and the proportions that are in this image, and then you'd have to be pulling it up and down and sideways to get that corrected. Lens correction doesn't do that, so you just can do some minor tweaks if needed, and probably most of the time they will not be, with Edit, Transform, Distort for the minor fixes. And then once you get it where you want, you click the check mark up here at the top of the interface to accept it, and there you go. Then you can use your crop tool again. So right here on the toolbar on the right, it's those crosses. Click on it. You know it's active because not only do you get these handles, but there's black behind there. And then you can crop in. And again, by having this empty area outside the transparency, you're losing less than if you just start working on the tool directly. So I'll just crop randomly here because as I said, you're not going to be working with this image. And then I'll crop up to here. And I don't know if those lights add anything, but um, again, that's another instance. Let me crop this and then we can see what it does. Yeah. So you can do some content aware. This is not about filling things in. So you could do some content aware fill down in this area, down in this area. 
And again, up in this corner, what I would do now that I see how it looks is I would just do an edit, transform, distort, and pull this corner slightly up. I'm not going to take the time to do it in the video because you could do that on your own image if it's needed. One thing I will add is <laughs> at this time in when I'm recording this video, there is now a Photoshop beta that includes a generative fill feature. I'm not using the Photoshop beta and I don't want to demonstrate Photoshop beta features. I'm only going to demonstrate things in the commercial release of Photoshop. So if you have that Photoshop beta and want to play with using generative fill to fill in those transparency areas that I cropped away on your image, you can try it and see what it does for you. It might do a nice job and get you, you don't have to lose this extra content if it fills it in. Uh, for those of you who are not using the Photoshop beta, um, at this time, then I believe or hope or expect uh, that they will include that generative fill feature probably in the Photoshop uh, commercial release in October of 2023. I can't promise. I don't know. I have no insights into it. Um, but you may have the access to be able to fill in empty transparent areas at that time if they release it as part of that version. Okay, so that was the first tool, was using the uh, filter, lens correction filter, in order to correct for the keystoning effect of those angling in lines. And again, you can see it's quite different to have the pillars upright. I think for this kind of image, it's a lot less distracting to have them straight rather than angled in. So let's go on to the second demo. And it's this European street scene. And um, I'm not going to butcher his name, but Alexander, here we go, is his name, um, is the photographer who captured this. And it is a stock photo. And so now for this street architectural photo, what I want to do is something sort of similar, but a different tool. Okay, I want to accomplish the same thing of getting rid of these angled in vertical lines, the keystoning, and straighten up these buildings on this street scene. So again, the image is opened into Photoshop with a background layer. I'm going to left click and drag it to the bottom of the layers panel to the add new layer icon right there, the square with the plus, and release it. And this time I'm not going to use uh, for this tool that I'm going to use a smart object. You're just going to leave it the way it is. But I am going to do that step of using the crop tool from the toolbars right there. Left click. And again, it just gives you some flexibility to move the image around and some space to move the image into. And as I said, you can try it with and without and see what you prefer. Okay, crop a little wider. Okay, and then accept the crop at the top, or you can just hit the Enter key, whichever you prefer. All right, so now the tool that we're going to use here is under the Edit menu. So for this street scene, we're going to go to the top of the Photoshop interface, to the Edit menu, come down to Transform, and go to the Flyout, and come down to Perspective right there. Left click on that. And so now we have that activated and you can see now we have the pink bounding box with these little handles um, all around the image. And so what we want to do is pull on the handles in the direction that you want to correct for the perspective. So you can pull these in any direction you like. You can, if you're, if, and if you're shooting downwards from a tall building, you'll get the keystoning in the opposite direction. So you can correct for that too. Just, you just have to adjust the, the perspective in a different direction. So now I'm just going to left click on this upper left handle. You can see where my highlighter is. And I'm just pulling this out until I see the buildings straightening up. And to me, that looks pretty vertical. So I'm going to click on the check mark at the top of the interface. And let's just check our before and after, before and after. Now, when we look at, look at the before and look at sort of the 
tall skinniness, particularly this church at the end of the street. And then let's now look at the after. And I'm so that's what I was telling you before. Things can tend to get a little squat <laughs> when you use edit transform perspective. So <laughs> what I'm going to do here now is do what I did before. So let me just do duplicate. So this was to see how a record of it here. This was transform perspective cool okay so edit transform perspective um, let me duplicate that and now we're going to do transform distort because what i want to do is make this little bit more squat church look a little bit more like how it looked in the original image so edit transform flyout menu distort so edit menu transform distort get the handles again and this time all we want to do is because it got shorter and what i call more squat we want to pull it up with the center handle and just try to make it a little taller and thinner so that it looks more like it did in the original image there we go so now we've got both the straight lines and it, it can come in a little bit i suppose here but I would do that adjusting with it. So let me undo that. <laughs> and you could do that edit transform perspective again if you want to bring it in. If even pulling it up, if it pulls it out again, there you go. So now we've got the height and the straight lines in the building by working with that. All right. And once you get it looking less squat or less flattened down whatever term you want to use then click the check mark to accept it and i'm going to get rid of these back layers so that now you can see let me turn this one on and you can see we've gone from that to this okay so then after that it's another matter of cropping again so i'm just going to crop right on this same layer so we come to the toolbar to the crop tool and, and again, this is a situation where if you are <laughs> having access to generative fill in a Photoshop, either through the Photoshop beta or if when you see this, it's released in the commercial release, you can try taking it like this and trying the generative fill and seeing if it will fill in and extend this space. So that's something to experiment with if you want to. Um, but if not, we're going to use the crop tool for anybody who's just on the... Uh, regular release that's available in June of 2023 and just pull in the crop handles and I'm just dragging those in and dragging this up okay and then once you get the crop where you want it then just click the check mark or the enter key to accept we can do that so now we've gone you know from the original to this which I personally like better but if you like the angle then you don't have to make that adjustment now this has absolutely nothing to do with perspective adjustment but just to let you know what I would do and then you can do some additional uh, finishing I like to call it after you do this now in an old town scene like this I find it a little bit distracting to see things like cables and wires and things like that going across. So I personally then would do something like come down to the toolbar and use the spot healing brush, which is this thing that looks a bit like a Band-Aid with a little half circle behind it and left click on that. And then make the brush um, just a little bit bigger with your bracket key. So I'm using my right bracket key to make that a little bigger. And you can left click, shift and left click and it just takes that right out of there okay and I'm not going to get too perfection about it you can same thing over here left click and shift key and then left click at the opposite and when it's a straight line and there's some more here which I'm not going to worry about doing at this time another finishing thing I personally would like to suggest and I've had judges suggest this over the years in photo competitions uh, is a way so when you have a bright 
area in an image like this. I'm trying to get to a different tool I'm visible here. Um, it tends to attract viewers eyes because they're drawn to the brightest part of your images. So if you're doing travel photography or architectural photography, you want the attention on the buildings. And this is a great leading line. You want the attention down here, not on this bright open area in the foreground. So one way to deal with that is to use your object selection tool right here, the box with the arrow going into it on your toolbar, left click on that. And then you can just sort of draw a lasso around this bright street area. And I would not include the sidewalk in this because it's good contrast. Let it make the selection with the marching ants of the road. And then um, I would go to either curves. You could try exposure. You could try levels. Um, but bottom of the layers panel, come down to the circle with the line through it, which is the new adjustment layer. Come down. I'm going to try curves and just see what happens here. Left click on that and you get the properties for that. It shows the curve here. I have mine set to always have this little pointer finger that lets you select from the image so I can select this really bright color. It puts a dot on the curve where that color is. So if I left click on that dot and pull it down watching the image, I can just darken down that street, you know, to whatever your taste is so that it becomes a less bright area. You've got these brighter leading lines leading with more contrast to the building you want to draw attention to and everything is now straighter. To my eye, that's a lot less distracting. So just something for you to think about beyond correcting perspective, how you can finish your architectural images so that um, they really are more artistic looking and you know better uh, for your viewers to look at and they look where you want them to look. Okay, so that is the end of demo two. Let me move on to demo three. And I'm going to make sure that my tool I like is active here. So here's the third demo. And we have this set of row houses. And I want to use this to show a tool called Perspective Warp. Now, you can certainly use this for out-of-camera photos that um, you are just working with, just like I worked with the other two photos. But this tool is also great for when you're compositing buildings into another background plate and you want to correct the perspective or you want to create an effect that is perspective based. So right now we have this straight row of row houses. So I want to, and you can see there's the keystoning going on here because it's tilting in and tilting back. So again, we've got the image open with the background layer. I'm going to drag that to the bottom of the layers panel to duplicate and work on that. And then this time, because of the tool, I again want to convert this layer to a smart object. And so again, it will give you the flexibility to make changes layer later uh, if you convert this to a smart object. So right click in the empty area on that active layer, come down to where it says convert to smart object, left click there. You can see from the little icon at the bottom right that it is now a smart object. So now again, I want to do the thing that I recommended in the other images in the other demos, which is to come to the toolbar, activate the crop tool, which is that tool right there, and get these white handles and crop wider than uh, the actual image so that there's some room for the perspective warp to maneuver and not cut into the content as much as it might if you didn't do this. So I'm just going to pull out and there's no defined amount. Just pull it out a bit and see what works uh, for you. OK, once you get the extended canvas, as they call it, with the transparency around it, top of the interface, click that check. So to accept it. Now, this tool that I'm going to show you, the perspective warp, um, I you have to be sure that your computer will be able to work with it. Um, so be sure that you have your graphics processor enabled in Photoshop preferences. Um, I'm on a Windows machine, so I'm not exactly sure where to tell you to look on an Apple. But for me, under the edit menu, come down to where it says preferences and go to where it says performance. So edit preferences performance on a Windows and you get this and over here, right here, 
if you see where my purple highlighter is here, the magenta highlighter, it says use graphics processor. Be sure that's checked to on if you want to use this perspective warp tool, because otherwise uh, your system will probably not be able to use this tool. Okay, so now we want to go to the edit menu and come down, where are we here, to where it says, pers uh, that's Puppet Warp, <laughs> Perspective Warp. So Perspective Warp is right below Puppet Warp. So you want to left click on Perspective Warp. And now it's taken us, you can see there's a new options bar. We're in a different tool or area of Photoshop right now. And what is highlighted here at the upper left is a word that says, or a button that says layout. So this is a two step process that we have to do in order to work with perspective warp. So this first stage, you work with the layout. And what you do is where you can see in the center of my highlighter, there's like a little cross hatchy or, um, or cross, I guess, type of a icon there. We're going to pull that out and create boxes around the areas that we want to correct the perspective on. And I usually go a little above and below the buildings that I'm working with. So you can see I've got that there. I'm going to left click and drag out for the layout. And I'm going to use this black building, the line between the black building and that pale yellow building as my divider. So I'm going to pull this out and now we have this pink box with handles and once you get it and release the cursor you can um, just pull up on any of these pink lines to adjust them if you want to so let's say I got a little bit too far over there into the yellow I can move it over if I want but I'm gonna keep it where it was now if I also want to draw another layout box to adjust the perspective for these buildings as well then I would start from over here and again I want to try to end up so that I'm lined up with that there so I'm gonna come to the right and I'm left clicking on my mouse and pulling over and I'm gonna come down and try to line up you know these little circles so that they're on overlaid on top of each other okay and I'm going to pull that up. So, and it should snap together if you're close. So look at that. So it lined up the circle. So now we have two layout boxes that we can use to adjust perspective. And if again, if you wanted to make this a little higher or lower or a little further in or out to the left or right or up or down, you can drag on these pink lines to get it where you want it. Once you get those lines and that layout of what areas you want to work with set then you come back here to the upper left to where it says warp and click on that warp and now see it's changed from those pink lines to these I guess black and white it's sort of an open or a hollow line I guess is the best way to say it here so now what I want to do is I actually would like to angle back so it looks like these buildings are going around a curve so I want to pull this edge, upper edge, down. So you can just see where it's going to go. Look at that. So you can see how I can tilt that. And now I'm going to come to the bottom handle. And I'll pull that up and push it in a little bit. Because see, I'm trying to make it look like it's going around a curve. And you can just keep playing with it. And so again, what I'm trying to do is I'm looking at the edge of the black building here to try to get it vertically straight so I don't have a keystoning effect going on. But I'm also trying to get the effect of it bending. And you don't have to do this in yours. You can just get rid of the keystoning. But I just wanted to show you something creative you can do with it if you want to do that too. Okay, so that's that first layout box that I set up. Now we can go over to the second box that I drew out and do the same thing because now again I want this end of the building to angle away so it looks like it's coming around a corner. So I can left click on that corner and pull it down and there's no numbers I can give you. This is just trial and error and back and forth <laughs> to get it the way that you want and so can you see the interest so you can see where this would be really kind of interesting or cool to be able to work with 
uh, if you're working with a composite and you're adding something in and the perspective doesn't work. And again, if you have just a single line of buildings you want to match a perspective, you can do that too, angled from larger in the front to off in the distance with a, let's say your perspective point is out here, your vanishing point is out here, then you can do it that way too. You don't need to be warping it the way I'm doing it here. But you have a lot of flexibility. I'm just showing you what the tools are capable of doing. Okay, so once you do that, I have mine pretty much straight in the way I'd like it here. The building has some natural things. I do want to point out, so this for me helps me achieve, you know, basically what I wanted to achieve with getting this around the corner effect. I just want to point out some other things, and I did it in that two-step process. Setting up the two bounding boxes that you, I wanted to work with, and then once they were set, then clicking on warp to be able to warp the buildings in the directions that I want. You have some other tools here in the option bar. Now, if you strictly want to uh, correct based on vertical lines, then or straight and near vertical lines, you can click on that tool there, that little icon with the three vertical lines. If you want to make horizontal line corrections, you can click on that. And this would let you um, warp to both horizontal and vertical. But for what I'm doing with this image, mine is set. But I just wanted to point out that those tools are there if you want to try them for yours. Once you get this the way you like, click the check mark to accept it back to the layer. And again, just to point it out, because this was a smart object, you see the sub layer that says perspective warp. I can double click on that and be taken back in here. So if you get it back to your layer and say, oh, I should have done something a little bit different. You don't want to start all over again. So by having that, you can go back in and I'll just cancel that out and we'll go back to how it was. So <laughs> now once you do things like this, depending on what you want to use it for. So let's say you do want to use this and I'm going to turn off this layer here. Um, let's say that uh, well, right, I'll leave it on for a moment. So show you what we went from that to that. Okay, um, then I'll turn this off. Uh, if you want to use what you've created to bring into a composite, another background image, then you may want to do more of a trim or get rid of. So you could do things like remove background on this, and then it would probably get rid of the sky. Another thing you can do if you want to deal with um, excess transparency here is come up to the image menu upper left and come down to where it says trim right there so image trim and if you left click on that you'll get this box and you can have it trim in based on any of these parameters that you give it I like to leave it on transparent pixels so it'll trim away and click OK, and there you go. So if you want to then bring this, move this into another image to composite with it, then um, it will make it a lot less excess content to bring in for compositing purposes. And, you know, you can do other things. I mean, again, there's finishing things you can do. So basically what I showed you going back to coming back in here and accepting the perspective warp is everything that's relevant, and that's all the full steps relative perspective. What I just did now is a finishing or another use type of step. Another thing you can do, as I said, for finishing is, let me just do a stamp layer here. You have to look when you're doing composites and or doing things like playing with perspective, you still have to look at your image and it has to be logical or people will look at it and say something is wrong here. So for instance, when I look here in front of this garage, what I see is a curb, and you would not be pulling your car out of the garage and over a curb. So as somebody who wants to be attentive when you're doing Photoshop adjustments, you'd have to correct for that. So one way to do that, and again, you're not working with my image, but I just want to point out things you can do to make sure for your images you're finishing them and paying attention to details is in the toolbar, um, want to use this patch tool, which looks like a little patch, left click on that. And all I'd have to do, just to keep it simple for purposes of this demo, is draw a little bit of a lasso around this, and then left click and drag it over. And I'm not going to worry about it being perfect for a demo, but 
you can see, I mean, I would spend more time if it was, was my actual image I was going to be using for something, but it, now you've got kind of a drive outable, how's that for a word, driveway, um, and it looks more realistic. And, you know, you can keep noodling with it if you want for your own image just to perfect it more. But that has nothing to do with perspective. So those were the three methods that I wanted to show you was the filter, uh, lens correction, the edit, transform, perspective, and finally um, the edit, perspective warp. And again, I hope you find those three perspective adjustment options in Photoshop handy if you do have keystoning in your architectural or travel images that you would like to fix. And um, I hope that, you know, for those of you who add buildings to composites, this will be helpful for you to help match the perspective in the rest of your composites as well. So have fun playing with those perspective tools to fix keystoning. Take care.